Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna restart the recording and um, yeah, so a profiling workshop would be really good. I'm, I don't think I'm an expert at profiling. I, I've just developed a couple of techniques that I've been using. Whether they are the techniques I should be using or not, I, I don't know. But um, a combination of things that I found on the wiki and and Python that I've been hitting the code with has been it's been interesting and, and, and useful. There's a way to actually generate uh, profiling uh, graphs. So you generate this massive tree of all of the nodes in, in, in Inkscape code, code base that it hits with all of the timing. So it says, oh, I spent 90% of my time in this particular branch of the code, um, which is which produces an SVG, which is which is kind of interesting. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, I'm going to share the screen uh, of my terminal th this time instead of the, the, the web browser because we were looking at the Git, GitLab uh, pages and how you can sort of do merge requests and um, reviews from, from there. Uh, but I think it's worth going through the, the, the command line as well so that people can kind of see what, what, it, what this looks like on, on the back end. Um, so usually, when when you do a checkout, you will, you will by default have the, the the master branch. So let's uh, make sure that we have the master branch, and then I'm going to do git pull to make make sure I'm up up to date. Oh, loads of ch changes. Um, and if I wanted to ch test master, what I would do is I'd go into my build directory. And uh, one of the things you'll notice on my computer is that I, I have multiple builds. So you'll notice that I have this basic build, new build, original build, and profiling build. This is because a lot of the time, uh, if, for instance, I'm, I'm testing somebody's branch um, to do a merge request, I don't really want to do a profiling build because it, 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 they're much bigger and they take a lot longer. And the caching is usually nowhere near as effective. Um, and I don't want to be waiting forever for, for, for a build. So my, my normal build is 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 basic, and I and I kick off Ninja to see how how much I'm going to be looking at. Hmm, eight hundred objects, but it seems to be it seems to be pretty fast. So we'll see. Probably we'll be using a lot of cash. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this, and I'm going to tell. Ninja not to use too too many C CPUs, uh, just so that uh, the the video chat room has enough pro processing so that you can still hear what you know. Because Ninja will actually steal the whole the whole show. Like your desktop will actually slow down to, to a crawl. I see now now it's actually building each one of these things. Pretty slowly. Yeah, I don't think we have time to wait for, for that build. So let's have a look at some of the profiling stuff. So So the first thing is is that the the the, the wiki page that we have for pro profiling shows you how you can produce um, First of all, you have to build Inkscape with with a with a profiling flag so that it's actually doing pro profiling. This by itself will slow down the whole uh, the whole of Inkscape. But the hope is is that the uh, the the thing that you're trying to pro profile will will kind of stick out. Um, and so, like the slowdown won't actually um, stop you from being able to test the specific thing that, that you need to test. Um, the 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 profiling produces these these out files. Um, and what I do is I, I rename these out files. Yeah, so this is a script that I wrote. Uh, what it does is it takes this gmon out file, uh, it renames it. So you, you, what you basically say is, oh, um, 
you can jump onto SVG and then uh, you give it a name. It renames the out file, and then it uses gprof to dot to 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 generate a dot file from from the report. Um, and then it turns that dot file into an SVG, right? So the SVG is this graph that you end up with. Uh, have one of these graphs available so I think I'm gonna to have to unshare my screen and reshare it so you can see the the Inkscape that, that actually shows how are we doing 80 10 percent bad So pattern SVG. Okay, so you can see here that this is a run that I did to, to see why patterns are so slow. And um, it's a very complicated tree. Um, and what's happening here is it's trying to show you all of the links and the, num the numbers of calls between e each of the items. You can walk this tree, and you can see it's color coded as well. So where where we have most of the uh, action going on, there there are lighter shade. So you can see this, for instance, this uh, SP Canvas group point is getting called one one thousand two hundred ninety six times, and uh, and there's this weird invoke point thing going on here, um, which is pro probably me dragging around a, a canvas item, right? So what's going on is that I have created a pattern SVG. I've loaded it up. And then I've tried to drag it around the cam canvas. And the idea is that I'm trying to figure out what, uh, what, why that's so slow or why it's jagging, why it's not uh, performing in a smooth way. Um, and this is also how you can find pieces of code like signals, for instance, because this will, this will go through signals, um, whereas a GDB can sometimes get, get stuck because you, you, the traceback won't give you the traceback beyond the signal. Uh, but this will, because it, 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 it's tracking all of the code, and so even if there's a if there's a hop between different parts, you'll you'll it's, you'll still see that that, that it was active. Uh, I'm not checking the uh, comments to see if there's anything going on, and uh, if anybody is even seeing this or not. You see that all of this code here is all of the. Um, uh, and I've forgotten what the, what our rendering engine is called. Cairo. See that all these CR pieces are all Cairo. Ky uh, okay, so to bring it back, um, the second the second thing that I use, which is uh, oh, let's see. Do the entire screen this time. So the second thing that I use is a is a is a Python script. Which I'm going to show you here. It's a it's this deep deep debug pi, and uh, the the whole the whole idea here is that you you call this you don't call this by running Python you call this through GDB. So you're running a GDB instance, and then this script what its job is 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 to is to create breakpoints, and then every time that breakpoint is hit, um, it it logs it. And uh, the idea is, is that you can sort of see if you've got if you two create two breakpoints, um, you you can see a b backwards and forwards between each of the each of the points as as they keep on getting hit. Um, this is especially good because I've uh, made it so that um, if you create this file, then it, uh, it that's what sets it off. So you can load Inkscape up, which can create loads of hits for a specific uh, point in the code. And as soon as you're ready to start logging. Um, you, you, you just hit the brakes and it, it or cut the brakes in this case, and then and then it just starts uh, writing out all of these logs. And then as soon as you've done whatever task it is that you're doing to try and figure out like why it's hitting this thing so many times, 
you 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 exit, and then you can just have a look at the the logs that it, that it outputs. Um, I don't know if I've got an example of, of the, the output. I think this, this is one of them. Yeah, so this this is an example of the of the raw the raw output. So you can see like it it what it's doing is it's giving you the the the, the each line is one tra trace back. So it says, Oh, I hit this trace back two hundred and sixty nine times, and then it gives you all of the all of the back. And the reason for this is like say if you've got a single a single point in the code that's being hit five thousand times. But you know, three of those times are from one block of code, and the other thousand or odd times are from some other piece of code. This will show up as two lines, right? So there'll be one. It'll separate these out into two two unique uh, uh, pathways through 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 the code, and you'll be able to make a decision about whether the whether the code needs to be refined uh, at this point or at some other point in in, in the chain. Um, so I found this very useful in uh, tracking Inkscape's signals, especially. Um, I don't know if anybody else actually does any profiling currently on, on Inkscape and, and what tools that they, they use themselves. I do some profiling sometimes, and I use the same. Yeah, you use the same set of tools. Mm. It's a pair for gprof, depending, but both can go to uh, dot .files and... Do you know of any tools that do what my Python script does, basically creating these, these lists, these pathways through through the code that you can... Like, like a bisection of. I think Perf or Gprof, uh, one of those can do something like that. I don't remember which is which, but I think Gprof, they could theoretically do that because they have the information. Yeah. For yeah, all calls. Yeah. Right, for, for all of them. They're, they're tools that I'm not very experienced with, so I'm, I'm sure that there are ways of using it that could improve greatly if, if I just knew. So I'm actually going to check on the merge request that we did before, Mark. Um, for those who weren't here earlier in the day, uh, we sat down with Mark and we went through one of his merge requests. And then I set it to merge once the pi pipeline succeeds. Uh, it, it got merged. It got merged. Excellent. Yeah, this is the the Morinum classes that that we did. Um, merge request two thousand one hundred and fifty four. Excellent. Thirty four minutes ago. That pipeline took a while, like more, more more than an hour, right? Yeah. Lots of files touched, so lots of recompiles. Yeah. It uses caching on the CCI builder, I think, so it, it uh, speeds up.
Oh, interesting. I just discovered that it's possible to export the uh, the shared notes to HTML. So oh, I, I wanted to ask a question of, I, I think the best pe people to answer this is Mark and Thomas, but on the other developers would, you know, your inputs would be great. Um, I have a merge request that's a work in pro progress. It's about adding uh, options for modifier keys. Uh, because of the way in which modifier keys um, are sort of populate the, 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 the tool code per pervasively, um, and because the merge request doesn't necessarily change any functionality in and of itself, it just allows the user to change it. Would it be acceptable for the merge request to not um, enable every single possible modifier key on, on its first iteration? Would it be doable to just have the, the small set the first? I'm not sure I get the question. Okay. I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll share my screen and, uh, and explain a bit, a bit more. What, what I think would be good is that if all uh, hard-coded uh, control key uh, checks are replaced by uh, a long, like um, proportional modifier key or things like that. Yeah, yeah I want to say the same. We're getting a lot of bug reports on, on stuff like that. So I, I can't change this or that shortcut, which is basically just a control plus whatever key. Yeah. Yeah, I would say if there's no functionality lost in your first iteration of the patch, then it's acceptable. OK, so le let's walk through what I mean. So there's a there's a set of extra functionality, and then there's a, a set of changes to the un underlying code. Um, and the question really is just wh where to make the cutoff to make the merge request easy to to process and to understand. Here it is, um, Merge Request 2070. So if we, if we look at the changes, You can see it's already a pretty big merge request, 382 lines added, 58 removed. Um, okay, so what was the, the, the big list? Here's, a, here's pretty much a, a, a list. So, so the idea is, is that each of the modifiers that it's possible to, to do are defined here. Uh, so for, five, for five minutes, I'm going to check the oven. Yeah. Uh, so, so each of the modifiers here are, are recorded, whereas before they weren't, so we didn't really know what modifiers we had. Um, this list it's, itself is not complete, right? So this is not all of the modifiers in, in Inkscape. So I stopped at a reasonable subset that I, I felt like uh, I could hand this over to both UX and to other developers and say, you know, test this thing. Is it Does it work the way that we want it to without having to touch quite so much of the code? Would other, de other developers be comfortable just having this subset as the first iteration? And basically, what I said, what I said before, um, if there is no functionality lost, if you already replaced the existing functionality with that subset, I think it's fine. Um, 
If not, then be prepared for complaints. <laughs> yes. And uh, now, now here's a here's a, a follow up quick question. Um, part of this merge request that currently stands starts modifying the preferences to add in the requirement of of um, loading the the user defined modifiers. Would it be reasonable to separate that into its own merge request so that this cleanup code uh, can go in first, right? So like we, we there's there's no modification to the functionality in in the in this without the preferences modification. Is is it reasonable to split them? I think it would be reasonable because it requires very different expertise from the reviewers. Um, mm. Or other put, if it stays in one, make sure there is someone with GTK expertise to review the GUI part. And maybe, um, I mean, looking at the, the core of this, what you actually added, it looks very much like actions, <laughs> just um, in a different context. So um, maybe make sure that uh, Taf reviews it. Um, if, yeah. What, what he thinks with his experience about actions, if there's any lessons that could be learned um, or applied here. Yes, yeah, I agree. Um, you know, writing new fun functionality is hard when you've hit the landmine of, of um, having to deal with custom code over and over that could have been easily done through an existing tool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a task to uh, at first split these this into two pieces so that it, I think it, it's going to be easier to review. Um, uh, because it is it is tricky to keep to keep on keeping this code up to date with base, right? So I have to rebase this constantly to make sure that it's up to date. Uh, and that you know that that's that's maintenance time. That's that's programmer time that I could be spending doing other things. So getting it merged in sooner would be better, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Javier has actually come back to us from previously and and, and talked about the the stuff he wants to do for one one point one. He said he's got a few LPE um, issues to fix for. For, for it, thanks to Adam's um, suggestions. No. Um, sorry, the cat just came up to me and want, wanted uh, petting, but he's covered in something. So uh, Adam and Javier have, have, have been talking on uh, uh, the rocket chat about uh, working with the, the live path effects. It's great. Ah, uh, thanks, thanks, Nathaniel, for posting that link. I, I mentioned what it was, but I didn't, uh, I didn't paste it. I think everybody's probably hacking away on some code, right? Like, like this was a in-person hackfest, and everybody's just tapping away on 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 the code right now. <laughs> 